All right, so continuing with the software configuration for the Voron 2.4. After firing up the web interface, I noticed a few warnings that I need to take care of. In order to fix them, I need to connect to the printer using SSH. And I found this fix on Reddit that should work to remove these warnings. The first step of the fix is to stop the Moonraker service. Next, I'll move to the home directory and create a folder there called gcode files. Change the directory again, this time to printer data, and remove the gcodes folder. Next is to create a link between the gcode files folder created earlier and call it gcodes. And the final step is to start Moonraker again. Now, after I reconnect, the warnings are gone and I can continue with the configuration. As with all Voron printers, the place to start with this configuration is the voron-design.com webpage where I'll go to the build and under initial startup. Starting with some extruder and heated bed temperature checks. So first the extruder, I'm setting it to 50 degrees and checking if the temperature rises on the extruder part and it seems it is rising so the extruder works fine so i'm going to disable it by setting it to zero again and now the heated bed the heated bed seems to be working fine as well the temperature seems to be rising and this is a good sign and i'm going to stop heating the bed by setting the temperature to zero Next is the stepper motor check. The Voron 2.4 has seven motors and I'm going to have to do a setup check for each and every one of them, starting with the X motor. So the stepper buzz command initiates motor movement. Uh, it's going to start with the motor running clockwise and after that counterclockwise. If for some reason the motor does not move in the expected direction, then uh, configuration changes must be made. I'm going to do the checks first for the X motor. So this is the command I have to run. So let's begin. So after running the command, you can see the motor goes from right to left, right to left. And this is not good. I'll need to change the direction in the configuration file. So to fix this, I'm going to open up the printer config file and under stepper X section, I need to change the direction of the motor by removing the exclamation mark. Every time I make changes to the printer config file, I always do a save and restart to make sure the changes are saved and applied. And now I'm going to run the same command again. And I can see the motor is indeed going from left to right and this is correct. Next I'm going to test uh, the stepper Y motor. Same command as before, only changing the parameter from stepper X to stepper Y. And for the Y motor I'm having the same issue. The motor seems to be going from right to left and it should be the other way around. To fix this, I'm going back to the printer config file and this time under stepper Y, I need to change the direction of this motor by removing the exclamation mark from the direction pin. Now I'm going to test again to see if the stepper Y motor behaves correctly after the changes to the config file. And indeed, the motor seems to be moving the extruder from left to right, which is correct. Next is the first motor from the Z-axis. This is the motor from the top left side of the gantry. And it's moving down and up, down and up. And this movement is not correct. It should be moving up and down. So back in the printer config, this time under the stepper Z section, removing the exclamation mark from the direction pin and saving and restarting. 
running the same command again to check if the motor configuration was properly applied. And it looks like this motor is now behaving properly. It's moving up and down as it should. Next motor is up, the Z1 motor. This is the motor from the left back side of the printer. This one is behaving similar to the first Z motor. So it's going down and up and it should be going up and down. So back in the config file, under the Z1 section this time, I need to change the direction by adding this time an exclamation mark under the direction pin and save and restart. Now I'm running the same command again to check if the configuration was applied properly. And the motor is now going up and down when running the command. So this is correct. Checking the Z2 motor. This is the motor from the back of the printer on the right side. The movement on this one is similar to the other motors on the z-axis is going down and up. Before updating the configuration file I'm going to check also the last z motor and see if this one needs changes as well. This is the motor from the right top side of the printer and it seems that it's also moving down and up which is an incorrect movement. Now going to the configuration file, I need to find the Z2 and Z3 motors. I need to change the direction for both of them. So for Z2, I need to remove the exclamation mark from the direction pin. And for the Z3, I need to add an exclamation mark to the direction pin. Checking again, starting with the Z2 motor. This one is moving correctly now, going up and down. Checking the Z3 motor, this one seems to be moving properly as well. So it's going up and down as it should. And this concludes the printer stepper motor configurations. Now I'm going to move to the next section, which is the end stop check. This printer has three end stops, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. The end stops on the printer currently are open, and running this command should confirm this. If any end stop is triggered, then uh, there's a problem, and I need to fix it. So sure enough, querying the end stops uh, results in all of them being open, and I can go to the next step, which is XY homing checks. So from the user interface, I'm going to tap on Home X. This should be homing the printer on the X axis. So for X homing, the print head will be triggering the X end stop. And it does. And I'm going to tap on Home Y now. The print head will be moving in the Y direction and it will trigger the Y end stop this time. So X and Y homing seems to be working fine. Next is the configuration for the Z and stop pin location. To do this, I need to start by homing the printer on the X and Y coordinates. With the printer homed, now I can move the print head. The idea here is to have the nozzle of the printer aligned as close as possible with the Z and stop pin. So I'm nudging it bit by bit until I am satisfied with the alignment. With everything in position, now I'm going to run the command that prints out the coordinates of the print head. It's going to print out the X, Y and Z, but I'm only interested in the X and Y since those are the only coordinates that are required for the Z pin location. Going back to the printer config file, I'm going to search for the Z 
save that home and here under home XY position I'm going to enter the coordinates I just found. Now it's time to test if the printer can actually trigger the Z end stop. And to do this all I have to do is just home the printer on all axes. And the printer managed to hit the Z end stop, so the configuration was a success. Next is the inductive probe testing. This printer has one single inductive probe and it is mostly used for auto bed leveling. I'll start by homing the printer on all axes. Now I'm going to move the print head above the bed. And I will try to lower the print head as low as possible above the bed until the probe will trigger. The probe is not yet triggered and it seems that I'm running into some kind of problems. Uh, the print head won't lower anymore, so I'll need to make some configuration changes in order for it to get as low as I needed for the probe to trigger. So I'm going to open up the printer config and I'll need to make some changes in the uh, stepper Z section. Um, here the position end stop is set to minus 0.5 and this is causing the error I'm experiencing. I'm going to increase this value to 3 in order for the print head to go as low as I need it. And this value will be fine-tuned later on in this configuration. So this is just a temporary value for the moment. Going for the inductive probe testing again. So I'm homing the printer and moving the print head on top of the bed. Now I'm starting to lower the print head closer and closer to the bed. Once it's pretty close to the bed, I'm starting to run also the query probe command in order for me to check if the probe gets triggered or not. And eventually I got close enough to the bed so the probe got triggered. Now that I know that the inductive probe is working properly, I can continue with the next step in the configuration. Next step on the list is the probe accuracy check. And to do this, I'll need to copy and paste the probe accuracy command in the terminal. First running this command, I have encountered this error. And to fix it, I have to home the printer and run the command again. And the test has passed if the standard deviation is lower than 0 0.0003 millimeters and in my case it was so i consider this passed next i'm going to pid tune the bed and hot end and i will be starting with the heated bed to do this i'll just have to copy and paste this command and wait about 10 minutes for it to finish Bed tuning has finished and now I can save the configuration and restart. So next it will be PID tuning for the hot end. First I need to set the parts cooling fan to 25% by running this command. And now I'll start the main calibration procedure for the hot end. Hot end PID tuning has finished. Now I'll save the config and restart. Next step is bed leveling. So on the V2, uh, there is an automatic bed leveling command. So I'm going to paste that in the terminal and and indeed it tells me that I need to home the printer first. So I need to home it first and then 
run that command again. Printer homing has finished, and now I can start the bed leveling procedure. And the command was completed successfully. So bed leveling calibration complete. The next step is the Z offset adjustment. So I'm just gonna paste in the command and the dialog will pop up. From here I lower the nozzle bit by bit until it barely touches the piece of paper that I have laid down on the bed. So here I have it right where I want it. The piece of paper is just caught up a little bit on the nozzle, not too much. It can still move along, but it has a little bit of drag. To finish this step, I accept the changes and save the config and restart. And the final step is the extruder calibration. Before anything else, there is an important step I need to do here, and that is to set up the gear ratio properly. I am running an afterburner clockwork with uh, BMG gear ratio, so I'm going to use this one. I'll have to save and restart. Next, I need to set up the extruder temperature to 200 degrees, or a temperature that will melt the filament that I have loaded. I'm using PLA, so 200 will be enough for me. Now I'm homing the printer and moving the print head to the center of the bed and loading the filament. Using a ruler, I will mark 15 centimeters of filament, like so. I will be extruding 50 millimeters two times with a speed of one millimeter per second. This should extrude 100 millimeters in total. After the extrusion is complete, I need to measure the remaining filament up to the mark. So I measured 15 centimeters of filament. I extruded 10, so I should be left with five centimeters of filament. If it's more or less than five centimeters remaining, I need to make some adjustments. So I have five centimeters and two millimeters in my case. This means that I extruded less filament than I expected. So instead of extruding 100 millimeters, I have extruded 98. Back in printer config, I need to make some calculations in order to calibrate the extruder properly. So with the data that I have acquired, I need now to do the math and find out the rotational distance. The equation is pretty simple. It's the previous rotational distance times the amount of plastic that I have extruded in millimeters. So in my case it's 98. And this is divided by 100. And with this final update, the printer configuration is complete. All I have to do now is cool down the extruder, wait for it to reach a temperature of 50 degrees, and power down the printer. That's it for now.